turquoise waters, vibrant red dirt, four wheel driving, epic beachfront camping and beautiful wildlife. This is Francois Perron National Park. Let's jump straight into the action at what might be our favourite destination so far. Stick around to see why we love this slice of paradise so much. We hope you enjoy this week's episode. Let's get into it. about two k's out sorry we're going over some bumps it's definitely the worst part of the track isn't it? so we're gonna head to Harold Bight the run into site hasn't been that bad there's been a few soft sections and to be honest this last this last run into camp now probably the worst of it. oh my god <gasps> Jesus Christ <laughs> there you go how gorgeous. Yeah, I think we could stay here a couple of days, I reckon. I'm actually surprised how many caravans have come through here, to be honest. <laughs> and all the setups that they've got. But everyone has a boat. I really want a boat. I think it'd be cool. Okay. Here we are, we're just checking out the tent, making sure we're all level. How are we looking, babe? Is it all level, pretty much? Yeah, we might need to come back a bit. I know, not a bad view, I think. Pretty good. Good. I wonder if we'll see any, like, turtles. I hope so. <laughs> There's no breeze at the moment, which is a good thing. Just yeah. Hopefully it stays that way, but we'll see. If it, if it does pick up, we are pretty exposed, but... See what happens. So. Well, I reckon it'll be alright. Looks like a beautiful spot though. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be pretty sheltered on this side, so. So I've been here all of uh, all of 20 minutes and there's a turtle just there. You see it? Yeah. So we've been carrying our paddleboard around on the roof literally since we hit the road and we haven't once taken it off. So. <laughs> Anyway, we're here on Herald Bight now for the next, I don't know, call it four or five days. So it seems like the perfect opportunity to get it down, pump it up and actually use it. And there's not a single bit of breeze. So if we're ever going to use it on this trip, it feels like it's going to be now. So I've just taken it off the roof. Just one of the old uh, cheapy Kings stand-up paddle boards. I can honestly count on one hand how many times we've got it out. So <laughs> it's, uh, it seems like a, just a perfect opportunity to get it out and give it a go. Yeah, and it's always felt like a lot of effort, like you've got to bloody pump it up because it's got a weird fit in that, you know, you can't seem to get for a air compressor. Or, or you've got to buy the special Kings one that they now make, and anyway, I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> anyway, I'll get to, uh, get to work and get on the hand pump, get this thing blown up. Well, I certainly remember the reason that we didn't inflate that more often. Man, that side of it. Might, uh, might get one of those electric pumps after all, so. <laughs> right, now I'm hot, I've got to go in. Ready to take this sucker for its uh, maiden voyage, eh? How good is this? <laughs> it's so nice, like yeah. look at this view. There's like one other boat on the on the water and that's it. 
Oh, paradise. Like the water, like you can just see, like look, can you see your hands so straight shallow, underneath, so like. Yeah, 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 we could stand here. Crazy. I have to say, I'm surprised that I haven't fallen off yet. Yeah, me too. My, uh, the couple of times we have been paddleboarding, I've always made a fall of myself, haven't I? I think that, though, to be fair, you were standing up and you were on the board by yourself, you know? Yeah. So now you're only kneeling, it's different. Definitely easier kneeling, yeah. Yeah. We're going to keep an eye out for more creatures. Well, given that that's the second one we've seen in... Yeah, I, I reckon I reckon we'll see more. They could have been the same way, but still. Maybe. I don't know, he seemed pretty big though. The other yeah, one was, was a bit smaller. He was a big boy. Doing my best not to spook him, but every time I even get slightly closer, he sort of scuffles off. For... Anyway, it's beautiful this turtle. It's absolutely full of colour. So nice to see. They're actually so much bigger as well than I expected. Like, I haven't never seen a turtle until the last day or two. They're so much bigger than I expected. Oh, it's so nice, it doesn't even take your breath away. So, just to give you guys an indication as to where we are. So this is Francois National Park. Uh, that's your entry point there where we, you, or sorry, you initially have to pay your fee if you're not a National Parks member. Anyway, you get to this point here and that's where they recommend you have to drop your tire pressure because it gets real soft and uh, sandy. And we went right up the top here to Herald Bight and that's where we're staying now. We've had a pretty, uh, pretty special day. Seen heaps and heaps of turtles. Saw a couple of different types of sharks. Yeah, heaps of wildlife, so looking forward to um, another day tomorrow. We had a nice early dinner, we just had to reheat some food that we had from the previous night, so nice quick easy one, and um, yeah, we just watched the, the sun go down basically, so. Another day in paradise, eh? <laughs> Start of our morning consisted of some idiot flying a drone over camp at like 6 a.m. this morning. Just like, if you're gonna do that, just go down the beach 50, 100 meters and then send it out. Don't like. It was less than like five meters from It was just like hovering it over camp as well. Like, don't get wrong, it was a beautiful sunrise. I get why he did it. But like, I have a drone as well, as does a lot of people now. Mate, just. I don't know, some it's people. a bit of respect. Yeah, exactly. A bit of camp etiquette, guys. Have a think about it. <laughs> anyway, that's our rant over for this morning. <laughs> it was quite funny, though. One of the um, other campers, sort of, a, like, they're set back in the, towards the dune, I suppose, behind where these guys pulled up. 
and they got up and uh, basically had a go at these campers. They said, For the drone. Yeah. <laughs> they actually said, Is that your drone you're flying? And this guy uh, right, denied that it was his drone. And then, sure enough, when he had to come and land his drone, he's holding his controller and the drone. And the, the lady came back in and was like, I knew that was your drone. <laughs> I love people like that. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Stairway to the Moon, but it's, I suppose, like a. I don't know if you'd say a phenomenon or... Uh, yeah, it's in Broome. And something that happens, what, is it like a few times a year? Yeah. Yeah. And and anyway, it's where the moon gives off like a glare on the water and it creates like a stairway effect to the moon, hence the name. Yeah, where the moon comes up like just over the water, like over the horizon. Yeah. And like it, yeah, it basically glows the water and like you can see the steps because of the waves. Yeah. But we pretty much had our own version of that last night. It we did. Amazing. It was cool. So towards the end of this beach, there's like some red um, rock, I suppose, whatever you want to call it. And I'm not sure if this has anything to do with it or it's just a coincidence, but the moon was like vibrant orange last night, wasn't it? Yeah, it yeah. wasn't even like just a little bit orange. Like it was like orange, like the dirt that we've yeah. been seeing. Which made me think that's what it was, like the dirt and the rock. Yeah. But yeah, it just came up just past that rock. And so it was pretty much the same as the stairway to the moon, where it's on the water. And then you've got your stairway. It was magnificent. It was awesome. Really yeah, nice. Yeah, we sat in our tent and watched it go up. Yeah. And then as the further it got up, the more white the moon became instead yeah. of orange. It was really cool. Yeah. So it's been pretty windy this morning. In fact, it's been very windy this morning. Um, so we haven't done much. I actually spent the morning editing. Jen's been reading down here. Yep, finished my book. There you go, bookworm Jen. I think my goal is to like read maybe like 20 books on the honeymoon. There you go. 20 books, that's the target. <laughs> I reckon you're going to do more personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just waiting for his wind to die because I want to take the paddleboard back out. It was good fun yesterday. I haven't used it in bloody like two years. And here I am wanting to use it tw twice in two days. Anyway, I'm going to go for dip in the meantime because it looks too inviting regardless. So the turtle swimming right past our camp. It's the first one of the morning. Oh, yay! Yeah, cute and small! What a cutie! <laughs> Wildlife at Herald Bight really is a spectacle to be seen. It provides a safe haven for the likes of the endangered loggerhead and green turtles, and is home to over 200 different species of animal. Oh, look who's coming in the water with me. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's becoming more common. As we get higher, the water gets warmer, so I get in more. <laughs> it's true. It's definitely been in more than the start of the holiday. Well, I don't, I don't blame the South Australia, it was a little bit cold. Yeah, the only reason I got in down there was because it was your birthday. <laughs> yeah, we really expected it to be a lot busier. Now, I know we are sort of a bit more remote. We're definitely that bit further around now from Monkey Mire as well. It's a bit harder to get to. Potentially that deters people, but I can, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's about 11, 12 people on this entire stretch of beach. That way, there's literally one more car up there. So we've we've got a quieter end again. I think as well, like, you can't really get caravans up here. Like, it's yeah. kind of difficult. Or like, you, maybe you could, like, if you really wanted to, like, push them. But I think a lot of people just wouldn't bother. There's no caravans here at the moment. No, no, there's, there's not nothing. a single caravan down here. So. And honestly, the drive in, it wasn't that bad. Like, finally you drop your tyres down to the right pressure. Pretty, pretty breezy drive to be honest. I think the wiki camp reviews are Deter very people. Like, yeah. deterring, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. like there was some that we read, especially Gregory's, which to be fair we haven't been to yet, and some of them were like, no, we, get, you know, it took us an hour to get like a kilometre because we kept getting bogged and like stuff like that. We say that now. When we get to Gregory's, we'll, uh, we'll give you guys an update. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably take <laughs> yeah. back everything. We've yeah, said. exactly. Yeah, yeah. When when it takes us three hours to get a kilometre down the road, we'll. Um, <laughs> we'll take our words back. Well, we have back. to go we that way to get words. to Bottle Bay and then up to Cape Parent as well, so... That's true, that's true. So. We're going to have to go through it eventually. Yeah, to get further north now in Francois Perron, the only way is to you sort of go... We're currently sat over on what is it, like the east side of um, of the peninsula. 
So anyway, you have to head back inland and sort of hug the west coast of it, um, which then takes you up, yeah, past Gregory's to Bottle Bay and then uh, Cape Peron. I'm looking forward to that in a couple of days' time. <laughs> Anything to get her in. <laughs> We're getting some speed now. Oh yeah, picking up the pace. Not seeing any turtles this time. I don't know, I came out here being like, I'm finally going to put one on my own. If you, if you went shallower, I reckon, and then went I down. The wind just came out this far actually, the wind just took me. How are you going on the back there, Jeff? No worries. Romantic paddleboard for one. Welcome back to another episode of Matt's Camp Cooking. Uh, we've got a feature star with us tonight. Welcome the flies. So, not one, not two, maybe fifty or so. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's just a uh, just another day. <laughs> they never seem to leave us alone, and they just get worse. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Sometimes you don't mind them. You don't even sort of notice them, and other times, man, they grind your gears. Even with a fly net on, like it's just like. Oh. Anyway, tonight's one of those nights. I'm just like get away from me. Alright so tonight we are doing chorizo chicken in like a arabiata sauce I suppose like a chili pasta sauce so yeah pretty simple. I don't know what it is I'm not normally a huge pasta person but man on this trip I've been loving pasta so that's what we've been having a lot of pasta. <laughs> I'm gonna chop this trees up, chop some chicken, fry it up, boil some pasta and throw it all together basically. There you go, no, this is it, nothing fancy. Of course, no pasta dish is complete without a healthy dose of uh, cheese. Bon appetit. How insane does the water look right now? There's like not a breeze in the air. It's just lapping at the shore. Gotta go back in. You just can't not go in when it looks this good. Well, here comes the better half. See how long it takes her to get this siren. <laughs> we are in paradise and I bloody love it. <laughs> how good is it though? You can't believe places like this exist. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, natural, really not very touched. Like, yeah. yeah. It's absolutely stunning. Definitely one of my uh, one of my favourites so far. Although I feel like every time we go something new, I keep saying, oh, yeah, this no, is definitely my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> Still, it's not a bad thing, I suppose. What are your favourites? My favourites are uh, Wharton, Rottnest Island, Bottle Bay, and Cape Peron. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, and Mike and Maya. That's and Mike and Maya. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're only like halfway into our trip, so we'll see if that changes by the end of it. <laughs> Yeah, these people next to us have a boat and they go out every day and they always come back and they're just like filleting their fish on the side every night. We're just secretly hoping that one day they come back with so much they kindly, you know, offer some to their neighbours, but <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to happen. <laughs> okay, this looks good. What have we got, Chef? Um, we're making toasties. I've got cheese and creamed corn, basically. Very nice. Tell you what, if you haven't had cream corn in a toasted sandwich before, you're doing it wrong. So nice. This little toasty maker that we got from Kmart, I think it was. Was it Kmart? Yeah, it's yeah. $7.50. $7.50, you cannot go wrong. Just plug it in, get the inverter on, and uh, away we go. Yeah, great addition to uh, have. Make some nice toasted sandwiches on the road. They always go down well. Yum, yum, can't wait. Have a go at those. Oh. Even got that crunch going on. Healthy, uh, healthy serving of tomato sauce. What's the verdict? It's 
too hot. <laughs> too hot, too hot to tell. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've gone to eat or drink through my fly net. You go like this and then realize that yeah, something's not working. <laughs> also, I don't know if this already exists, but I've come up with a great idea. Someone needs to make like a range of stylish hats or caps that you can wear that has like a fly net built, built into them. Ones that like, you don't, they, you know, you can either just detach or they hook on or they're already like sewn in, but that you can like fold away within the hat or something like that. And then just like deploy straight away once they're, um, once the flies come, you know? I feel like there's a market for it maybe, you know? So maybe not, maybe, maybe everyone just needs to look stupid like me. So we've made a decision this morning, we're going to um, head further up the peninsula so we're going to go try out Bottle Bay or Gregory's or something like that um, and stay there for one night. So yeah, we're just having a quick bite to eat now before we uh, finish packing up and, and head off basically. But yeah, we've enjoyed a uh, really nice, oh, what has it been, three days? If all else fails, we'll just come back here because there's heaps of space. it's just on the beach in one of the rocks it still has its hook on it as well so we are taking it it's three for the sea wherever you go um, so hopefully we're protecting some wildlife this is a long long piece that someone could easily get tangled in so guys don't forget if you do see rubbish just pick it up yeah. you can add it to your pile and you're just doing the world a favor I'm just glad you don't have a purely white t-shirt on because you never get it out <laughs> This red sand just would most definitely just stain. I don't think there's many places in the world where you get quite a contrast between the uh, the land and the sea. Oh, that water looks delicious. Doesn't it? That water just looks so inviting as well from here. All right, guys. So we've left um, Cape Perron. It's beautiful. Um, we're now heading to Bottle Bay, and if we can get a campsite there, we'll stay the night. Hopefully we can. They've got three different loops, so we'll try each of them, but we're hoping for loop A. Basically, you've got three loops. Loop A, B and C, and then day use area down the bottom there on your right. Loop A, you can't use any generators, and they're more small campsites, so great for us. Loop B and C are larger campsites, so good for groups, but um, and you can have generators as well. So we're going to try Loop A so that we don't get too much noise and there's smaller sites. And then, yeah, there's beach access, so it's not on beach camping, but it's very close, so you can access it and walk down. And they also have toilets as well. Loop A. I think I just missed that sign. Not even going to bother with shoes. Alright guys, let's face the music. Lovely. It's alright, I'll work it out. Yeah, the other side, our clothes will fall out, just be careful. Good, 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 yep. 
not too bad. This sand is absolutely red hot, even with thongs on. Just the tiny bits of sand flicking up is enough to burn your feet. It's so hot. So, Bottle Bay is definitely, I suppose, not a swimming beach. It's more so a fishing beach for sure. Quite a few people down there with rods throwing a line in, seeing what we can get. It's nice, nonetheless, we just went for a nice dip. Super refreshing. But uh, yeah, either end of the beach you've got the red dirt, which is really beautiful. So, looking forward to coming down here at sunset. Maybe with a beer and um, yeah. Maybe with a beer, definitely with a beer. No, definitely with a beer. There we go, now we're talking. Well guys, we're already back <laughs> to camp, so we spent probably half an hour on the beach and in that time me and Jen went in the water three times. <laughs> Couldn't believe that, it's definitely a record for Jen. Anyway, I think this is going to be us for the afternoon, just chilling at camp because it's currently 37 and a half degrees, so, and that's in the shade. So it's probably 40 outside. This is, um, I suppose, you know, like the reality side of camping sometimes. <laughs> no, there's no, it's just one of those, you just can't be bothered or too much. We don't have a huge amount left in our pantry because um, we're, we're going to the shops tomorrow. But this is, uh, what have we got? Beef and vegetable soup. Oh, there's a fly in it as well. <laughs> bit of added protein in there. Oh, <laughs> stop. Um, we've got a bit of leftover bread, so there you go. That's our dinner. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes it's all you need. Worst part about it is just trying to eat with these fly nets. But... Well, the wind's really picked up. We're going to go walk over to the top of the dune and sit there, watch the sun go down. Don't no, no, you're right, we've got a beer. Cheers, babe. Cheers. <laughs> Had a, another pretty epic sunset. Yeah, nice time. All right, good morning, guys. So we're just finishing packing up the camp. We're uh, well, pretty sure this is going to be our last day staying here in Francois Perron National Park. We've um, now camped for that was our fifth night, I think, if I stand correct. Anyway, this morning we're going to head over towards um, Skipjack Point, which is basically a lookout near. Um, Cape Perron, so it's not far from here only sort of, I think it's less than 10k's, so it shouldn't take as long as to get to, but from there you're meant to be able to see sharks, rays, possibly dugongs, dolphins and you know just about everything else, so uh, fingers crossed we get lucky, we'll um, head over there now and, and see, what we, see what we can find. The sand at the Perron Peninsula is mostly made of quartz with a thin coating of iron oxide. This oxide coating is the same compound that forms when iron rusts and gives the sand its bright and bold red colours. Got a 250 metre walk along this uh, I boardwalk, if you like. Car looks pretty good from over there. Well, here we are, skip jack point. Oh, nice, that. I think our chances of seeing a dugong is slim based on the wind and uh, how choppy it is out at sea. I might try to get the drone up, it is windy, but we'll see, here we go. Might be able to see more from the air. So, look out below. So this is what we could see today, if it wasn't so rough. <laughs> Eagle rays, shovel nose rays. Oh, I was getting confused, I thought they were a shark. They're a ray, I think. The green turtles, dugongs, sharks, it's a bit vague. Manta rays, and dolphins. Do you know, I reckon, depending on how small they were, you know how I said I saw, I think I saw that flathead? Yeah. It could have been that. Maybe. Yeah, it's just a bit wishy-washy out there, so it's hard to see yeah. anything, even with the drone. Yeah. Um, you don't want to go too out, too out, and it's windy, and then you lose it. I just want to say, how good is this? They actually have a tyre deflating or inflating station. So uh, they've got two of them, one on either side of the road, for when you basically first get to the, the soft sand stuff. Um, so it's really awesome, and they're bloody good 
uh, inflators. So yeah, makes for a, a, um, a real quick time pumping your tires back up. Really good idea. Shame more uh, national parks don't have it, but I can understand why we don't, but this is awesome, so. This is the perspective of Perron. A visit to the Perron homestead provides insights to the different perspectives of local Aboriginal people, French maritime explorers, early pastoralists and fishers, including the conservation managers of today. The original Perron homestead bore was sunk in 1922 to a depth of 540 metres. It was used for watering stock and other domestic purposes, except for drinking as it was too salty. The old bore has been replaced with a new one, which now free flow and produces 170,000 litres a day at a constant 40 degrees Celsius. Oh my god. That's so warm. Well, I've got my swim shorts on. Might as well get in. Wow. That's incredibly hot. If it wasn't already close to 30 degrees, I'd probably quite enjoy this. <laughs> On a nice cold winter's day, this would be fantastic. But yeah, 40 degrees water in a 30 degree day is, um, it's on the warm side. <laughs> now there's a 45 minute trail that you can do, which takes you out to an observation, you know, includes the sheep shed um, or the wool sheds rather. Uh, and shows you around the homestead but um, Jen's not feeling too well after corrugation so I won't keep her waiting for too long but just go check out this wall shed further up ahead so here we are so this is one of the big wall presses so the wall was uh, graded so basically it would be sorted out into the different sheds depending on the quality of the wall So the sheep would be in these pens as such, and then they get pulled over across to uh, this side where basically they then get sheared. And once they've been sheared, they essentially get sent through the, uh, through the pen out the gate and then get released back into um, that big pen out the back. Oh, that was super interesting actually. I definitely learned some stuff there. It's a shame we haven't got more time on our hands to go and do the full trail because there'll be some uh, good bits in there. Anyway, definitely worth checking out. That's just literally by the um, inflator station or inflation deflation station. So yeah, be sure to check that one out on your way through. Thank you so much for watching another episode. Hit that like and subscribe button to ensure you don't miss out on any of our travels. If you enjoyed this week's episode, we think you'd love one of these videos too. Give them a try.